Uh, <clears throat> one quick question for Jonathan. So we, we're sure, we're certain from today that Christopher Hitchens believes that religion is the enemy of culture in all phases. Uh, and the, our other two panelists are sort of ambivalent or of a middle level position. But again, Jonathan, is it possible for culture and religion to be reconciled? That's why I asked you earlier that absent the book of Revelation, uh, would that be something we could well, all aspire I, to? I, you know, I, I was reminded of a trip my wife Anne and I took to Paris. We saw the uh, Pantheon, which was a, a church that was desacralized uh, after the French Revolution. It is a sterile church. Uh, you can go to Notre Dame uh, and, uh, or Sacre Coeur, which are old medieval churches, and they're very beautiful places. We go into our art museums and we see statues that we praise as the highest art of, cl of the classical world, their original purpose was as what our Bible calls idols. Uh, this is our culture. Religion is our culture. It provides the stuff of our culture. And to repudiate that uh, cultural legacy is precisely the same as the Taliban going out and dynamiting Buddhist statues in Afghanistan. It's vandalism. Silly point. Very, very silly point. <laughs> Extremely silly point. All right, with that, <laughs> you know, you've never really seen Christopher Hitchens that articulate. Silly point. All that British breeding came to that. Silly. Jolly silly point. Jolly silly point. Very foolish observation. Monty Python S. A Sacre Coeur, by the way, was built in the late 19th century. It's not medieval at all. It was built to celebrate the defeat of republicanism in France. It's, it expresses the sectarianism of the French Catholic Church. Indeed, but I it's do historical believe... al alignment with the anti-Semites, the army, and the elite. I do believe... You go worship there if you like. Okay. Uh, that's the now, now we're bickering. Find. Now we're bickering. All right. I do believe Notre Dame is a medieval cathedral. <laughs> yes, around which Thomas Aquinas once flew, you may be interested to know. He levitated all around. We have the witnesses. After, after leaving one of his books on the high altar to be reviewed by God and receiving, by channeling a, a favorable review, he flew in delight around the nave of Notre Dame. You can check it out. And many people think that's culture. Christopher, I warned you I was here to protect Jonathan. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's take some questions from the audience. Uh, let me just remind you, that we'll, I'll ask the people who are standing at the microphones, uh, it's very important for you to know, and this is a moderator's prerogative, I have very little power in the world, but this is it. Uh, I would like you to ask questions. This is not here to provide a speech uh, or to provide for some kind of political message that you have. It's a question that is addressed to our panelists and that are somewhat consistent, hopefully consistent with the, um, the description of the panel for today. Yes, you, sir. Mr. Hitchens, how come it took the most religious country in the Western world to uh, rescue your pretty secular country, Britain, from two world wars and to be the bulwark against communism and now to lead the fight against Islam? Very good question. Um, I mean it. Um, um, there are, I did correct it in two ways. In my country of birth, by the way, let me just say this for the first time, I've been waiting to say it for weeks, my fellow Americans. Um, <laughs> I took, um, if you'll allow me, I took, my, I took my oath at the Jefferson Memorial in Washington on the 13th of April, which is his birthday and mine, and I remind you that he's the author of the Virginia Statute on Religious Freedom, which is the basis of the First Amendment to the Constitution, which makes America a secular country, not a religious one. The only country in the world that says that religion is no business of the state. Uh, but, and, but, and this has had to be defended several times from religious secessionists who wanted to ruin the Union, from those who wanted to impose prohibition, from those who imposed uh, slavery and segregation in the name of the Bible, to those who want garbage taught in the schools now. It's an ongoing battle to keep that constitution the way it is. In my country of birth, the Queen is the head of the church and everyone has to pay money whether they want to or not. Uh, when she dies, her son will become the slobbering, chinless sympathizer of Islam, a witless dauphin who goes to the mosque these days, will become the head of the church. That's what you get when you build a church on the family values of Henry VIII. For all that, I think England was worth saving, so thanks. <laughs> You, sir. Thank no, you. no, I was, I, was, I was asking I'll, that gentleman. I'll be very brief. It's no, no. no, no, it's okay. Go away. 
Go away. Go away. We don't want fascist crackpots taking up our meeting. Thank you. Go away. Go away. Different panel. Fascist crackpot. Different. Fascist crackpot. Different we're here. Panel. We're not here to talk to you. Throw him out. Sir. Throw him out. Here, sir. Throw him out. No. 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 Sir. No. I've, I, I have ac I have exercised my sir. discretion as a moderator. Could you please sit down off. and? Sir. Let him ask. No, no, no. Can't bring it on. So that the this subject? gentleman has the floor. Okay. Security. Security, please. Out you go. Go away. Okay. No. Is, sir, why don't you ask your... Sir, over sir. here. Sir. No, go away. <laughs> All right, I... Thank you. I believe okay. that I've been offered the opportunity to ask the question. Yes. Huh. No. One question. No. Yes. Go away. No. Next. Okay. Because you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Let's resume. Okay. For a moment, let's bring science more front and center in this discussion. We, we're an extraordinarily. Uh, successful species in the last 200 years we've multiplied ourselves by a factor of more than six and yet we live in a country today where more Christians believe, expect to be raptured than believe in evolution with uh, facing the challenge the challenges we face today of global warming which maybe threatens our children our grandchildren's future are we more likely to survive that challenge by accepting that science has given us our place in nature or accepting the belief that still is common in this country that we as a species are apart from nature. Is it science or religion that gives us a future? Anyone can respond. Thank you. For That's, the a, I think, a very wise question and not one that has a particularly simple answer. Um, I mean, it is certainly true that in addition to the Hal Lindsey book, the, the rapture literature has been extremely well selling in this country as evidenced by the success of the Left Behind series by Tim LaHaye. Um, you know, I don't believe that uh, there's any ism or thing that's going to provide that awareness. And I, I go back to my earlier point, which Christopher ably disagreed with, that uh, religion can be a source of uh, an awareness that, that the world does not revolve around each of our desires and needs. And certainly to some degree, the, the limitations or potential limitations of everybody pursuing their needs willy-nilly uh, is one that you know, we, are, we are bearing the fruits of today. And I, and I, don't, I don't think religion as a force necessarily says man has dominion over everything. There are certainly strains of religion that say that, uh, but there are others that very much place man in a, in a position of stewardship, and, and hence the debate now emerging in the evangelical community and with Richard Chizik uh, facing a, a whole lot of heat, pun intended, from evangelicals for his stance that there's a need to address global warming. But, but I think that's evidence of the diversity of belief that's inherent in, the, in this whole phenomenon that we're addressing. There are, there are no uh, a true fundamentalist, because even within fundamentalism, uh, there are different opinions and different voices. And the, and the one that Zachary's pointing out, it, it shows that uh, there's nothing in a fundamentalist reading of the Bible that predisposes you uh, against uh, doing something about global warming, for instance. One of the ways that you can prove that the Bible is man-made is the um, is the the injunction to, as well as to go forth and multiply and all that, to be given dominion. Uh, to go for the most part, on the condition, I mean to say, that you have dominion over every uh, fish, fowl, and other animal that, to some extent, itemized. There are no, um, obviously, there are no marsupials um, in this list because the writers didn't know the existence of Australia. Um, and there are, much more crucially, there are no microorganisms because they didn't know there were any germs. That's how you can show it was written by unwashed humans as well who lived on intimate terms.